The UNSC and its military campaigns are practically all we have seen of humanity within the Halo universe. The UNSC is far in advance of our modern culture, with the application of artificial intelligences, automation, advanced robotics and the holy grail of renewable energy, fusion power plants, alongside all of the advanced military applications of technologies. But with all of these immense technological breakthroughs, and the effects these will inevitably have on human society, culture and economics, what is life like for the average human being in the Halo universe outside of wartime? Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. This is Lauren Theory, and today we look at what life would be like for normal human beings living in the Halo universe and what effects AI has had on the lives of the common people and economics as a whole. Modern humans in the real world, and in particular in the developed world, live in a time, statistically speaking, which is safer and better to be alive than in any other time period in recorded history. We are living longer, there are fewer wars, better medical treatment, more sedated lifestyle, better education, lower poverty rates, plentiful resources, but that doesn't mean that we've reached the peak of our civilization. One of the major contributing factors of humanity's prosperity in the modern era is the innovation of sophisticated computer systems, automation and data processing. These have all led to humans in modern times statistically living in the greatest and best time to be alive. But automation is already starting to take jobs from humans and has been doing so since the Industrial Revolution, and it's going to continue at an ever-increasing pace into the future. Research from McKinsey Digital found that 45% of jobs, with others citing as much as 52% of the workload currently performed by humans, can and will be viable for automation takeover in the future. Elon Musk and others have come together to start something called OpenAI, a non-profit artificial intelligence research company that aims to promote and develop friendly AI in such a way as to benefit humanity as a whole. But in the Halo universe, computing, automation and data processing has advanced eons beyond what we currently have, prime amongst them being AIs. Human AI constructs can be grouped together into two categories, dumb and smart AIs. These labels are technically misleading as both types are extremely intelligent, but dumb AIs are only capable of learning about subjects within their designated area of expertise, whereas smart AIs exhibit much more human-like characteristics such as emotions, creativity and intuition. Smart AIs can only be created by scanning a human brain and replicating the neural pattern to a digital storage system known as a Riemann matrix. However, after seven years of operation, the AI will descend into a terminal condition known as rampancy. Various solutions have been attempted to counter this issue, but none are known to have been effectively implemented. Although the UNSC still relies heavily on human competence, robotic drones are used in combat to certain extents, often providing fire support or real-time reconnaissance on the battlefield. Examples of UNSC drones include the F-99 Wombat, the Mako and the Argus drones. In civilian society, automated systems, sometimes controlled by the sub-processors of a larger AI, have found uses in piloting civilian vehicles as well as performing most manual labour in agriculture and industry. The scale of AI-driven automation ranges from single cities to entire worlds, the former sometimes being operated by dumb AIs such as the superintendent in New Mombasa, while smart AI Mac oversight on harvest agriculture operations is an example of the latter. So with AIs and automation doing practically every process-driven hard graft kind of job, and many of the medial process-based production, manufacturing and engineering type jobs, what happens to the large swathes of humanity whose jobs are now performed faster and more efficiently by robots and AI, rendering over 50% of the human population jobless? It's a complex issue and it's not isolated to the oversimplification of robots take over everything kind of take on things with variables such as how developed the colony is, how close to the inner colonies the world is located, if the colony has strong or weak economic connections with the human empire at large. What are we, as highly evolved apes, to do when our creations do most of the things for us? Well, there are a few theories and options based upon emergent theories and proposed solutions to the impending automation of society. The first being simply to retrain the people who have been made redundant as a consequence of AIs taking over the process-driven jobs. This does seem to be the most logical, but is greeted with the issue of market saturation. With over 50% of jobs now automated, the 50% of people without jobs will have to move over into fields that haven't been affected as severely. 
Most modern authorities on the matter suggest humans and robots can work alongside each other, but the issue herein is that robots can perform the process-driven jobs hundreds or thousands of times more effectively than humans can, leaving humanity to fill roles more suitable to personal, creative or interactive endeavours. But that's a massive influx of new people into a field that may not necessarily be prepared or able to accept them. In modern times, Bill Gates recently said that AI is a positive for society and that displaced workers could fill gaps that currently exist elsewhere in the labour market, like elder care, teaching and support for special needs children. Instead of learning new skills, this solution encourages workers to use their existing skills in a new industry, and this does seem like a more viable option at first glance, but the reality is that many of these jobs don't necessarily pay very well and thus those slightly more skilled in engineering and other professions likely to earn larger salaries have to take a disproportionate pay cut through using their skills in another industry. Another distinct possibility is that the new technologies create new jobs for both short and long term. If this is the case, people would then have more options, but it's not without its pitfalls, because it also makes it difficult to encourage workers in jobs that are at risk of being replaced by robots to expand their skill set if we don't know which skill sets will be the most important given that new innovations can completely and utterly revolutionise the way in which we work and thus fundamentally alter the job market and the skills in highest demand. Take YouTube's co-evolution with computers and smart devices as a prime example. 10 to 20 years ago, it was nearly unheard of that people could make a living online, yet with the right technologies and a little innovation, YouTube is theoretically able to provide a sustainable income to millions of individuals. Some experts have predicted that soft human skills like communication, creativity and empathy will always be needed because robots can't replicate those skills. However, new inventions could open the door to other hard skills that could be required and in high demand in the future. The final and most extreme possibility is that not everyone will work. It could be that displaced human workers can't reskill and don't have it in them to fill the more human-driven roles. This would obviously lead to higher unemployment numbers which could have a large impact on society and the economy. But if automation grants human resources in abundance, a basic universal earnings scheme could be put in place allowing everyone, whether they work or not, to earn a basic income and thus continue to drive the economy. But in the greater scheme of things, it has already been evidenced that human colonies differ drastically based on if they are part of the inner or outer colonies and their economic value to the UNSC and the UEG as a whole. When faster than light travel was still new and highly expensive, potential colonists were subjected to rigorous physical and mental testing to determine their suitability for extrasolar colonization programs. As such, the colonists who formed the basis for the 210 first wave colonies settled before 2390 formed humanity's elite. These worlds would later be known as the inner colonies. Earth and the inner colonies soon became the political and economic basis of the UNSC as humanity began expanding to the outer colonies. For humanity at large, this was a time of unparalleled prosperity and optimism which has later come to be referred to as the golden age of human colonization. By the time the settlement of the outer colonies began, many of the initial difficulties of interstellar travel had been alleviated. By extension, the selection criteria for the colonists became far more lax, resulting in the populace of the outer colonies being far more varied than that of the prestigious inner colonies. The consequences of these differences, and the way in which the inner and outer colonies were established and supported by the UEG, led to quite a difference in economics, technology and thus lifestyle. The inner colonies were more funded and more established and provided more economic value to Earth and the UEG, so AI, automation, robotics and the like were much more prevalent, likely leading these colonies to be veritable utopias where humans' existence is a joy and the vast majority of life's strains and struggles were negligible. On the contrast, the outer colonies were less developed, less funded, and due to their distance less useful as viable economies to facilitate good trade between the inner and outer colonies. On top of taxation without representation, where the outer colonies were left to their own devices on the vast majority of issues, but still expected to answer to be influenced by and pay into the system that benefited the inner colony populations more than themselves. Life in these colonies 
would be much more, well, colonial, socialist, even communist, whereby the inner colonies would thrive on capitalist, individualist and utilitarian ideals. These contrasting conditions create a division within humanity in distance, logistics, economics, ideals and class. With this weighed up it becomes clear that although AI, automation and robotics has made life a joyful and leisured experience for the people of the inner colonies, with resources plentiful, life standards being exceptional and money easy to earn, the people of the outer colonies live a much harsher and tougher life with only some of the comforts offered by the extensive automation enjoyed by the inner colonies. In this regard, it is better to be an inner world colonist than an outer world colonist, and in a very real sense you can't necessarily blame the outer colonies for resenting the inner colonies, the UNSC, UEG, and have a strong rebel and insurrectionist sympathy. Given the circumstances, I'd feel the same damn way. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons: so Tenchi, the Silent Cartographer; Brian, Sebastian, Defiant Alpha One One Seven; Nathan, Red Sea, and Darian, the Holders of the Mantle; Ty, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Kaiser, and Silux, my Reclaimers; Zach, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spesigo, Spartan A Four Nine Eight, Guppy, Josh, Mickey, Bastian, and Molshar, my Metox, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome, and all of this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo lore discussed to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.